Welcome back again, guys. We're going to continue our study of data and statistics. What we're going to be taking a look at in this lesson is how to find the mean, median, mode, and range of a given set of numbers. These three items are what we call our measures of central tendency, meaning um, about how much would it be. You're probably familiar with the term average. That's the same idea here. We're looking for um, a way of kind of uh, looking at where the data falls or what it falls near about where you would expect it to be. Um, so within our measures of central tendency, let's define these terms here. Mean is probably something you've calculated before. You've just called it something else. We call it the average. The mean is simply the statistical average. How do we calculate that? We add up all the numbers we've been given. We divide that total by how many different points of data or numbers we had when we added them together. Um, the median simply refers to the middle number. Um, and the trick for a median is you need to make sure that your numbers are in numerical order. When you're given a list of numbers, they're not always in the right order, so you need to reorder them. And then we just count towards the middle, which one falls exactly in the middle of the data. Finally, mode. Mode refers to the number that shows up the most, which number appeared or popped up in our data more often than any other number. Um, and just so you know, in a mode, sometimes there's no mode because there's not a number that appears more than any other. Sometimes you can have more than one mode because there's multiple numbers that appear more than once, okay? Um, so don't let that confuse you. However, um, there's always going to be a mean, there's always going to be a median. Mode is one of the things where there may or there may not be one. Um, the last term that you see up here that we're going to define is called our range. Our range is simply uh, referring to how far does the data span. So basically what I'm doing is I'm subtracting my uh, least number from my greatest number, the smallest from the biggest, and that's going to tell me how, how many places it kind of fell across. So for example, if I gave a test and the lowest grade was a 72, the highest grade was a 100, I can subtract those two and say, well, everybody fell within 28 points of each other. That's my range. Um, the other thing I want to talk about along with these things is what we would call a line plot. Um, line plots are a convenient way for looking at data. It makes it really easy to see your mode and to uh, calculate your range. So it's just a visual way of displaying our data. So our line plot's a graph that displays the data with X marks above a number line. So here at the bottom, you'll notice I've drawn a number line. And then I just make a mark for um, however many papers I have that have that number correct or whatever it is that we're grading. This one doesn't have a title. Um, it's not real data. It's just there for an example. So you can see that means there was one for one. There was two for two. There was one for the number three. Um, there was five for the number eight. However, if you look at this really quickly, you can see, well, what's my highest line of marks on eight? Eight is my mode. That appeared more often than any other number. The other thing we can notice really quickly is our range. I had a 14 and I had a 1. I'm going to subtract the small, the 1, from the large, 14. 14 minus 1, my range is 13. There are 13 points that this data fell over. Okay. Um, I'm going to come back to this when I give you your next couple of terms as well. This is also a really good way to see what we can call a cluster and an outlier. And those are kind of what they sound like. So a cluster is simply um, a number around which all the data seems to collect. So you can kind of see if it's all clumped together. An outlier is a number that's far away from the rest of the data, meaning it was somebody who scored exceptionally high or maybe somebody who scored exceptionally low, but it wasn't anywhere near the other, other grades. Um, somebody was either really on their game or having a bad day. So it's an outlier. It's not near the data. So if you take a look at this, you'll notice that we do seem to have a cluster. You'll notice there's a whole bunch of X's right around in this section here. Um, so it clusters around 8 or 9. You could even give me the range. There's a cluster between 7 and 10. There's a lot of X's right here. This is where most of the people fell. And then you'll notice there's this one sad little lonely X over here with all of this blank space here. That's what we would call an outlier. The reason this is not an outlier over on this side is because if you look, there's data all the way up through here. There's no gap. So here where you see a gap or no data, and then you see one lone little one out here, that's an outlier. So we have a cluster right here, a gap, and then that shows me this outlier over here, which means this one was kind of strange. And sometimes when we're calculating our central tendency, we want to ignore the outlier because it'll mess with our data, and it won't give us a true idea of what the central tendency was. 
so we're going to take a look at a couple examples. The first thing that we always want to do is make sure that our data is in the right order. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite it. What I like to do is if it's possible, if you're in a book you can write in or you're on a worksheet, cross them out as you go so you don't get confused. So remember, we're starting with our smallest and working our way up. So my smallest number is 4.3. Then I've got a 5.2, 5.8, 6.7, and finally an 8.4. So the first thing we'll calculate is our mean, which is our statistical average. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add up the five numbers I've been given. I'm going to use my calculator just to save us some time. So 4.3 plus 5.2 plus 5.8, plus 6.7, plus 8.4. When I add it all up, I get 30.4. You'll notice that's higher than all of them. That's not our average. We're not done. Remember, that's just the first step. Now we need to divide by how many numbers we had. I added up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different numbers. So I need to divide that by 5. When I do that, I get 6.8. 0, 8. You'll notice that this makes sense. If you look at it, all of your central tendencies should fall in between your extremes or your biggest and smallest number. 6.8 is right in between those. So, sorry, 6.08. So I know that's a good number. I must be right. Um, if you wind up with a number outside of the range of your data, it means you did something wrong and you need to recheck your calculation. Our median is simply our middle number. There are five numbers, which means I'm going to, if I have an odd number, there's going to be an exact one in the middle. If I have an even number, there's going to be two in the middle that I have to take the, um, the average of. So if I have an odd number, basically what I do is I add one to it and divide by two. Six divided by two is three. The third spot is where I'm going to find my middle number. One, two, three, making my median or my middle number 5.8. The other thing you can do, and it really only works if you have a small set of data, is kind of take your fingers, work your way toward the middle. Here's my middle number, 5.8. If you have an even uh, set of data, which I might on the next board, but not this one, there's going to be two numbers in the middle, and you'll have to take the average of those two numbers. So my median is 5.8. My mode here, mode refers to the number that shows up the most. Is there any number here that appears more often than any other? No. So what I'm going to write is none. And here's what I'm going to tell you. A common error I, error I see on this is children try to write zero because there isn't one. Zero is a number. Zero could be the mode in a set of data. So don't write zero. If there's no mode, write no mode or none or NA for not applicable, but do not write zero. Okay? The last thing we want to figure out is our range. Our range is how much space does our data span. So I'm taking my biggest, I'm subtracting the smallest from it, and I find out that the range of my data is 4.1. The only other thing I would ask is, is there an outlier here? There's not on this set of data, so we're probably pretty good. There will be one on the last one. You'll notice there's no outlier on this one either. All right, we'll take a look at our next example. Um, first thing I notice is these are negative numbers. So remember, you need to flip your thinking when you're ordering from least to greatest. It kind of works in the opposite order that our other ones would. So the larger the digits, the smaller the number is. So my smallest two numbers are negative 13 and negative 13. We do need to list them both, so make sure we list, list them both. Then a negative 7, then a negative 5, finally a negative 2. So the first thing we want to calculate is our mean which is our average. So I'm going to start by adding up each of my numbers. When I add all these up together, I get a negative 40. Then remember, I'm going to divide by 5 because that's how many numbers I had. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And when I do that, I find that my mean or my statistical average is negative 8. Median refers to our middle number. Again, there's an odd number of digits, so I'm going to have an exact middle. Add one onto it, six divided by two, three. The third spot is my middle number, one, two, three. My median is negative seven. And you'll notice that these numbers are pretty close together. It makes sense since we're talking about a central tendency. Where do the numbers tend to fall? The one thing you'll notice is a little bit different, and this can happen with our mode. 
Our mode is what number appears the most. I do have a number that appears more than any other. I have negative 13 on here twice. Everything else only appears once. So my mode, the number that shows up the most, is negative 13. That's a little different than my other numbers, so that might not be the best, uh, the best measure of a central tendency here. Because remember, we're talking about what numbers are they generally close to. Um, most of them were not near negative 13, but there were two that were there. Final thing we want to calculate, what is our range? So I want to know what is the difference between negative 13 and negative 2. When I do that, I find my range. And we always want to write our range as a positive number. There's 11 spaces in between the two. Don't write negative 11. Just how many data points does it cover? Between negative 13 and negative 2, there are 11 digits. So if you do that subtraction, you use your calculator, you do it in your head, and you're like, but Miss Brome, that's negative 11. Yes, it is. But we're always going to write our range as a positive number, okay? There's a positive number of digits that it spans. My range is 11. All right. One more example, and this one will have an outlier, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. Don't mind the loud noises, I just knocked something over. So again, the very first thing that we want to do is we want to put our data in order. So I've got a 4, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, and a 10. And then I've got a 24. Well, if you'll notice, between 4 and 10, there's not a whole lot of difference. There's a lot of numbers in between them. They're pretty close. You'll notice 24 kind of seems like the odd man out. So what I have now is what we would call an outlier. My outlier is 24. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two different calculations. We're going to calculate our central tendencies with the outlier if I could spell, and without the outlier, so that you can see what, what difference that makes to our data. It's going to make a big difference when we talk about our mean. The other ones, not so much, but our average is going to be very different this way. So first, let's calculate our mean. So again, we're going to add up all the numbers that we've got. 4 plus 4 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 10 plus 24 gives me 76. Then I'm going to divide by how many numbers did I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to divide that by 8. And I find that my mean is 9.5. A little high. Now we're going to ignore our outlier, and we're going to see what we get when we add it up and we don't include our outlier. So I'm going to add up everything except for that 24. 4, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 10. That gives me 52. I'm now dividing by 7 because I have one less number. And my average winds up, I'm going to round because it's actually a decimal that keeps going, uh, approximately 7.4. You'll notice that's a huge difference. That's a two-point difference between 9.5, a little more than 2, and 7.4. So that outlier makes a big difference to your data. So you need to determine whether that's something you want to include or not. All right. Our median, which is our middle number. You'll notice that this time I have 8, which is an even number. That means I need to take the middle two numbers. Half of 8 is 4, so between 4 and 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I have two central numbers. I've got 3 on this side, 3 on this side. I've got two central numbers. That means I need to take the average of the two. So add 8 plus 9 and divide by 2 your median is 8.5. You'll notice your median isn't actually a number in the data. That's okay. That happens sometimes. It's not a problem. So now let's uh, ignore our outlier and calculate our median. With our outlier, I only have seven data points because I'm ignoring the outlier, which means the direct middle is eight. So you'll notice my median changed, but not a lot. The median is still pretty close with or without the outlier. Finally, we want to look for a mode. The mode, um, again, remember I told you sometimes there's no mode, like in the first example. Sometimes there's multiple modes. There's multiple modes here. I have two fours. I have two tens. So my mode is four and ten. And you'll notice even with the outlier or without the outlier, my mode is exactly the same. Your outlier is not going to make a difference to that. Um, final thing we want to calculate is our range. 
Now, with our outlier, I've got a 24 and a 4, which makes our range 20. It spans 20 different data points. If I ignore that, you'll notice my range is significantly reduced because now my biggest number is 10. 10 minus 4 only gives me a range of 6, which is a much smaller range um, to try and work with than 20. So here we're seeing the data is more clumped together, whereas without it, you see there's one that's really far away from the others. So you always want to keep an eye on the outlier and how that affects your average because you might not want to include it depending on what it is you're trying to calculate and what it is that you're looking at. Um, again, if you're uh, confused at all on this, please rewatch the video. Feel free to go back and rewatch the earlier video if any of the vocab was tripping you up. You can go back and rewatch that to familiarize yourself with it. Um, you can ask me questions in class, post them, on, post them into the comments section, send me an email, multiple ways to get a hold of me um, if you're having any kind of trouble. Have a great night.